as we are looking at the pathogenesis of amyloidosis, right? Pathogenesis of amyloidosis. And um, basically, our focus was on the sequence of steps. So, there is a stimulus for the excess production of amyloid, uh, amyloidogenic proteins. That's what we said you. In the last class, there is a stimulation for the deposit. This forms the first step. Then you have partial degradation. So, before the deposit itself, there will be attempt to degrade it by the uh, reticular endothelial system and the macrophages. Don't forget that reticular endothelium system and the macrophages try to degrade them. Then you have the deposit happening, um, uh, you know, after, uh, before the deposit itself, partial degradation is attempted. Then the deposit, then comes the non-fibrillar components, which will stabilize the fibrillar components, okay. So, not TDR, they are just 5%, but they will stabilize the 95% people, right. Now, in this video, what we want to cover? In this video, we want to cover the deposition of AL amyloid and the deposition of AA amyloid. AL means, what is AL? Amyloid light chain, right, protein and AA is amyloid associated protein as you have already seen. Both of these are fibrillar components. So, let us look at AL first, deep diving into AL. So, first of all, what you should have? Stimulus. So, stimulus here for AL will be some disorder of the immunoglobulin synthesis. Example, you will have multiple myeloma, B cell lymphoma, other plasma cell dys dyscrasias, okay. So, what and all you need to know into the stimulus, you will have multiple myeloma could be a stimulus, B cell lymphoma could be a stimulus, other plasma cell dyscrasias could be the stimulus. These three will be the stimulus. I am putting stimulus in yellow actually. Okay. Oh, you can't see it. I'm so sorry. Now, coming to excessive immunoglobulin production in the form of monoclonal gammopathy, uh, there's a production of uh, intact immunoglobulin lambda, kappa or rarely heavy chains. So, here we will write some more. All these are uh, the excessive immunoglobulins being produced. These are the stimulus actually. And what are the ones that are produced? You have lambda, can you see here? Lambda light chain, lambda light chain, kappa light chain and some rarely heavy chains. These are all produced. Lambda, kappa you have to write. Okay. Stimulus will be multiple myeloma, B cell lymphoma, other plasma cell dyscrasias. What are produced? Immunoglobulins like lambda light chain, kappa light chain and sometimes even heavy chain. Rarely you can have some heavy chain. Now continues the same story that we saw last, last time. Nothing different here. You will have uh, partial degradation uh, or proteolysis. Limited proteolysis will occur by the macrophages uh, or, and the endoreticular, what is it? Reticular endothelial cells. Reticular endothelial cells, everything will attempt. Partial degradation will happen. Now comes this, uh, the stimulus for the deposit also we told you and basically here comes the deposition phase comes here, okay. Stimulus for deposit you can put anywhere in the stimulus part or in the deposition part, we have put it here. Then coming to the non-fibrillar components, the non-fibrillar components will uh, uh, stabilize these uh, fibril proteins. What are the non-fibrillar proteins? Do you remember from the first video? Yes, we have the AP that is the amyloid P component. And the GAGs, what are this? You remember that sulfated glycosaminoglycans, they play a role in the protein folding. Don't forget this word folding. It's such an important word, right? Folding and aggregation of the fibril proteins, okay? This completes uh, deposition of AL amyloid. Do you have any doubt? Shall we move on? Now, we are moving on to the AA amyloid, how it is deposited. So, please pay attention here. See, whenever there is chronic inflammation or a cancer, the macrophages release IL-1 and IL-6. These are cytokines. These are released by the macrophages. This much did you understand? Should I repeat? I am repeating. Please pay attention here. The stimulus here is chronic inflammation cancer. These stimulate the macrophages to produce IL-1, IL-6 cytokines. These cytokines stimulate the liver to produce SAA. What is SAA? Serum amyloid associated protein. This is a precursor definitely for the amyloid associated protein. That's the AA protein. Understood? Very good. Step 1 is done. Isn't it? Step 1 is completely done. Now we are moving on to the step 2. 
Here there should be partial degradation. Where will it happen? You already know macrophage, reticular endothelial cells. Very good. This is also you have to use the word proteolysis. Degradation is how? By proteolysis. Don't forget that word. Now coming to the stimulus for deposit, uh, for the deposit to happen, for the deposition to happen. The stimulus should be there and the deposition is going to actually happen now. The uh, stimulating factor, one of the stimulating factor here is AEF. This is a glycoprotein, glycoprotein. So this AEF glycoprotein is nothing but amyloid enhancing factor glycoprotein. This one is going to be elevated in uh, chronic inflammation, cancer, um, familial Mediterranean fever, etc. This acts as the stimulus for uh, deposition of the AA protein. Okay. So let's move on to the last step here. Now the deposit is going to be stabilized by what? By the non-fibrillar components that will be the AP component and the AP component and the glycosaminoglycans. You have already seen these components everywhere, right? So how will they do that? There will be a special type of folding for the protein. So it will make it insoluble and the proteins will be aggregated in such a way that it cannot be degraded, it cannot be sol it cannot be dissolved, it cannot be uh, etc. Folding is a very important word, okay. So that covers your uh, pathogenesis. In the last video we saw the steps in general and now in this video we have seen the deposition of AL and AA amyloid. There is a diagram which you can draw. Let me show you. Mm -hmm.